bed is that the, all three collapses were pretty close to classic examples of what they call controlled demolition. When, when dynamite or some kind of explosives are placed throughout the building at all the crucial points, and then they put them on a computer and they bring them down in a certain order, and therefore the building comes straight down so it doesn't fall on these other buildings, and uh, they come down in virtually free fall speed. And that's what happened here. All three buildings. You can see them on you know, all sorts of places on the website. Uh, you don't see them on TV anymore. They showed them the first night, and, and Dan Rather, you know, bless his soul, comes right out and blurts out the truth. He says, boy, that looks just like controlled demolition. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 9-11 Commission also does not tell you that Marvin Bush, the president's brother, and their cousin, Ward Walker, were the principals of the company that was in charge of security for the World Trade Center. They don't... Man, man. <laughs> All sorts of coincidences here. They also don't tell you that there were many reports of people who worked in the building saying, you know, we got a shutdown order, so for three days we couldn't go in the World Trade Center. There, there were engineers coming in and out. We didn't know what. Again, his name is Scott Forbes. He joins us from across the pond today. Scott, thank you for making time for us. You're very welcome. Hello. Uh, let's see, where do we start here? We don't have a lot of time, but I think what we should do first off is, uh, you know, just tell us maybe what the atmosphere was leading up to 9-11, exactly what your job was and, and what you did there in the World Trade Center Towers. Sure. Um, I worked for, as you said, Fiduciary Trust in the South Tower. I was based on the 97th floor. Um, where our data center was um, about three weeks prior to 9-11 um, our company along with many others in the towers were given notice that there was going to be a power down in the uh, top 50 percent of floors in the, in the southern tower um, this was unprecedented um, as you can imagine a lot of financial institutions um, in the building and to have a complete loss of power meant a complete loss of systems and for an organization like my company it was truly extraordinary I mean people probably scrambling uh, as soon as they could to, to secure their systems before the power down yep that was part of the deal um, have we... there been uh, let me let me because for the sake of time I want to keep this moving as much as possible Scott had there been any power downs like this again uh, you were notified by the Port Authority there'd be a 36 hour power down at the top half of your tower uh, had there been anything like this prior to this particular power down and exactly give us a time frame of, of when you were notified about the power down as related to 9-11 what was the date of the power down and had there been one prior to this okay the power down was on the Saturday and Sunday prior to 9-11, so that would have been the 8th and 9th of September. We were given three weeks notice. It was relatively uh, a short time uh, notice period to make all the preparations needed. And um, it was unprecedented. We'd never experienced a power down in the towers as far as I am aware. I had worked in the towers from 1998. Um, my colleagues who had been in, in the building well beyond that could n not remember an occasion such as this, apart from the bomb incident in the early 90s. Well, let's, uh, let's move to this, uh, Scott, because 
Now the repair, now the power has been down, and you see a number of maintenance workers coming into the building. What was, uh, what was in your mind suspicious or notably suspicious about some of these workers coming in to uh, come in for the power down? Actually, at the time, I wasn't suspicious at all. Um, it was just part of the fact that there was a power down and that there were um, workers in overalls um, in the building. But looking back now, uh, you noticed that there were some suspicious behavior with these workers. Well, of course, looking back, you, you question everything and uh, you wonder, well, the, the main reason, one of the main reasons why I became suspicious was I got in touch with the Port Authority and I got in touch with the 9-11 Commission to register this piece of information yeah. so that it would be acknowledged, uh, if only to be thrown away. And I had no acknowledgement. Um, they did not come back to me. I repeatedly called and wrote letters to them. I've had no acknowledgement. Um, it's as if this information is um, of no interest to anyone, but to me it seems to be part of the puzzle and should be registered. I, I was not in the office on 9-11 because of working that weekend, I had the day off on the Tuesday. And so I was in my apartment which overlooked the Trade Center. I lived in Jersey City ac across the river from the uh, towers, so I was eyewitness to what went on there. And the, as soon as I saw the first tower go down, the South Tower, I was highly suspicious. It, it just didn't l look correct. It looked like a controlled demolition. It, it did not look like a building uh, collapsing either from an aircraft hitting it or from a fire inside. It seemed to crumble um, into dust. Yeah. Um, it just didn't it just didn't ring true.